Hello, friends. I'm Kerry Farr. Welcome to In Your Corner. Reverend Henry Schaefer is with us today, and you're going to be amazed at the things he and I are going to discuss. We're going to talk about people that are demonized. Most people think that they are demon-possessed, but there is such a thing as being demonized. Reverend Schaefer, so good to see you. Thank you for joining me on In Your Corner. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm excited about being here. Amen. Well, you heard my opening statement there. Explain to our folks a difference in demon possession and being demonized. Well, first of all, uh, in the scriptures, when it talks about in the King James Version of the Bible, it uses the term uh, possession. They were possessed by a devil. And that is a mistranslation in the King James Version of the Bible. It should be uh, the word that is called demonize. And that does not um, mean ownership. Possession means of an ownership. But demonized means that they were afflicted or being tormented or being oppressed by a spirit. A person who is possessed by a demonic spirit is a person who is not saved. They are not a Christian, and the demon, the devil can totally possess that person. But a person who has received the Lord can have and be tormented by an evil spirit. Uh, they can be oppressed, uh, they could be battling anger, depression or any such thing as that. And that's what Jesus came to do, was to set the children, his children free from demonic oppression. And that is the difference between being possessed and demonized uh, in a you know, very short, short sense. And that was a great definition. And you know, I'd always thought when we talked about possession, as you indicated there, that it was only for people that were non-saved. Never thought that a Christian could be demonized, but we know that we can be oppressed. Yes, sir. Uh, I've heard voices speak to me after my first wife died, right. as I told you off camera, that said to me when I was driving across a bridge, stop the car and jump to your death. So this happens a lot to even Christians. Oh, yeah. There, uh, Derek Prince, which is one of the generals of the faith, if, if you've ever been involved in deliverance ministry uh, as such, uh, Derek Prince will identify that the uh, the person who um, a spirit a demonic spirit is a person, and this is what he said is a person without a body that has been in a body and it wants to live in your body, and so that demonic spirit uh, goes from generation to generation, and it can inhabit a body and not ownership, just be oppressed there, and it wants to live out its sinful, lustful desires to through a person. And what happens is that when we are when we are born, we're born into sin, uh, born into a sin nature, with the Adam sin, and that nature. And what happens through life, and because of our parents, and the things that they have been involved in in their bloodline, there are generational sins, uh, or generational spirit sins or spirits that can be passed down the bloodline. So the doctors know this. They know that they'll ask you when you go in, say, tell me about your mom, your dad, your grandparents. Uh, what things were they involved in? Were they involved in alcoholism? What type of things were they there? Were they addicts? Tell me what's going on. Heart disease. Does it run in your family? Well, those can be generational curses that goes right down the bloodline. It could be diabetes. You can find that in people who um, are uh, in, in nationalities or uh, you know, in, in different people, like the African-American people, because I deal with a lot of them, uh, they have diabetes, runs in, in, that, uh, in that genre there. So what happens is um, these demonic spirits can b live in a person and torment a person. And that's what Jesus came to do, was to shed light on the demonic spirits that are in his children. Because deliverance is the children's bread. It's for God's people. It's to set them free. When Jesus said that he came to set captives free from sin and the penalty of sin, but not only that, he said that the Spirit of the Lord God was upon him to bring deliverance to the captives and to the sight of the blind and recovering of those who have been taken at captive of the will of the enemy. So deliverance is part of the atonement. Healing is part of the atonement. Salvation includes all of this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people have left this very important piece out. And that's why so many Christians are struggling with the issues in their life that have never been targeted, these demonic spirits. They can be, they can be, you know, some people say, well, I don't, how can you have a spirit in you? 
uh, in this here. So to, to, to help me go through, down that line for those, the, my audience, the audience to understand is that we are a three-part being, body, soul, and spirit. And the scriptures tells us that in Ephesians chapter 2, that we are dead in trespasses and sins. That means your spirit man is actually dead. God sees a person without Christ dead in trespasses and sin. But when the new birth happens, the spirit man comes alive, and he comes alive to the spiritual things that are all around him. But what doesn't change is the mind, will, and emotions in your body. And the body still has those fleshly desires. Spe fleshly desires. It could be pornography. Yeah. People, the, uh, many people battle pornography. Before salvation, they battle it. They get saved. They come to the Lord. Now this pornography, this, this, this uh, thing has grabbed them, and they just can't shake it. They can't get rid of it. And the reason is, is because it's not in their spirit. It lives in their mind, will, and the emotion in the body, <clears throat> to act it out in the body. And so what happens is that demonic spirit wants to take over the body and to push against everything that's God. Everything that's godly in your life, it wants to push against. But deliverance from that demonic spirit of pornography, uh, you can be set free from that by going through the process that we call deliverance. Yeah, and I want to speak to that just a moment. Folks, I, I just want to, you know, tell you that, you know, I was saved at a Pentecostal youth camp. Mm -hmm. John Wilkerson, uh, the uncle of David Wilkerson, yep. who wrote The Cross and Switchblade, was my pastor when I was a young man. I went to church camp, was saved. But then I went to a Baptist college and, you know, started believing that, these things weren't prevalent today, but as you're going to explain in a moment, folks, uh, folks being demonized and oppressed is is just it's it's everywhere today, and it seems like it's rearing its ugly head more so than than we've ever seen in our lifetime. Recently, I was at a church where Pastor Schaefer was at, where. They did a deliverance service, and he has been doing this for years, and he can tell you multiple times that this has happened over and over, where we saw people that were oppressed, Christian people that were demonized, and those, uh, should, should I use the word, those demons were actually cast out of these people in a church service. Right. Now, the Catholic Church believes that they've been doing exorcisms for, you know, since the, uh, since, uh, the church was founded. But so many Protestants don't believe in it today, Pastor, but you've seen it uh, close and personal. Yes, the, uh, the, the demonization of people uh, is the same thing in the world as it is in church. You'll see they'll get saved and they'll be battling pornography as such, come right on in the church. And now they try to take the scriptures and they try to take those scriptures. And the Bible will work. There, there's no doubt about that. But what they're trying to do is take the the, the, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and against such there is no law. Take all the fruits of the Spirit and say, now this is the way you should be operating because this is what the Scripture says. All along, they want to do that, but now there's something that is still there, a root that has not been pulled out, which would be called pornography. Or this root we're going to talk about, and this one would be anger. Yeah. Just say a person is dealing with anger. And they know it should be love and joy and peace. They know that's the way I should operate. But why do I battle anger? Why all of a sudden is my buttons pushed and this thing, and it's really this thing comes up and I say or I do things that I shouldn't say to my wife, my friends, or at uh, Wendy's or McDonald's. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> when it's not right. But uh, something will come up and then you'll say some things or do some things you shouldn't do maybe uh, strike something, sling something, throw something, say some words, and then all of a sudden... I'm guilty. Yeah, I've done that in my Then life. all of a sudden, it goes down. And you'll say, oh my God, what was this? That, that, that wasn't me. Sweetheart, please forgive me. I'll never do that again. And what's happening is that you're a Christian, you're saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, but this root here has not been pulled out. And then what happens though, deliverance targets that is that when we sit down with you and we do a, an interview, or an, just like we're doing now, one-on-one, -on -one, tell me your life, tell me what's going on. So if you tell me that that's what you're dealing with, then when we take you through deliverance, that's exactly what we're gonna make sure we get at. 
If it's battling um, uh, pornography, then that's what we're going to deal with when we get there. But we will talk about your life because the devil ties. He uses the same tools, but he just ties them up a little different. And what deliverance does in that interview finds that process of tell me what's going on. If you were a meth addict or what have you, that's what we would deal with. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you if that was never a problem in your life, what, well, we're not going to go down that road. So that interview process is very important. And then that is where, here's what that process is. When Adam and Eve messed up in the garden, they hid themselves behind their own fig leaves. And to get Jesus or get the Lord to take care of them, they had to come out from behind their fig leaf and say, I've messed up and I need your help. And when they did that, that's when God came in and rescued them from what they had been ensnared with. And that's the same thing that every person has to do. Be real and come forward and say, hey, I'm battling this and I'm ready to admit that I need your help. And deliverance will do it. And deliverance will do it. You know, I've read statistically that seven out of 10 men sitting in church are dealing with pornography addiction. So that is something that you deal with every single yes. day. Yes. And so when you take somebody through this process and they're struggling with this and you're talking about the spirit man is obviously not doing it, it's the fleshly man. Right. That's, and, and so there's a constant battle. You know, the spirit wants you to do right, the flesh wants you to do wrong. So when you take someone through deliverance, what happens after you get to the root of that and pull that demonic spirit out of that body? So if you can imagine a field, a, a person, that's their, their life, uh, is a field where trees have come to Christianity. The, the trees have all been cut down, and now they're trying to go out there and plant good things in that field. Well, they never pull the roots out. They never pull the stumps out. So after about a year's time, here comes this pornography again. Here comes this anger. Here it all comes back. They can get control of it for a little while. Exactly. Yeah. Then what happens what deliverance does, it goes in there and pulls that huge root out, the stump and all. Now is where you go in and you fill up that void with good things, with the Word of God and prayer and start to put that good soil in there. So you, you will have a different crop now. Where that stump was at, you will now have a different kind of crop that will be there. It will be good things that will come out of that. See, a lot of churches and pastors never pull the stump out. They'll tell you, don't let that grow, don't let that grow, don't let that grow. And you know you shouldn't. But, but deliverance pulls that out. Now, what they can expect um, after that deliverance is there's going to be a process of them having to guard that area in their life if it's pornography. And they actually get delivered. I'm not talking about doing pornography and whatever you do and then kneeling down and saying, oh, God, forgive me. I don't want to do this again. That's just being convicted of your sin, of what you just did. Deliverance removes that root and now what happens is you have to start to build that area. So you'll do it through prayer. You can do it through uh, changing your lifestyle. This is the point I'm trying to make here. Thoughts are hinges that doors turns on. Thoughts are hinges that doors turn on. So if you've been set free from pornography, when you even start to think it, I'm not even going to let that hinge start to form. I'm thinking someplace else. The more you think about it, another hinge of forms. You continue to think about it, a handle forms. Next thing you know, the devil's on the other side knocking. You're doing pornography again. You must control your thoughts after deliverance because the scripture tells us that the enemy will always try to come back. Whatever that stronghold was in your life, you can rest assured the words of Jesus are true and guard that door and never let it open up again. And you're free from that pornography. I'm not talking about starving it. You've been delivered from it. You've been delivered. You've been delivered from it. And he will come back and knock to see if he can come back. And no, Mm -hmm. I don't do that anymore. And you move on in life. Mm -hmm. So that would be something you'll have to always, you'll always have to battle that because if it was your stronghold, if it was, if it was addiction, uh, if it was anger. So when the devil's going to know how to push those buttons and to see if you're going to react that way. So you have to say, no, I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to get frustrated. I'm not going to let that happen to me. Yeah. Yeah. So pastor, what are some of the more miraculous uh, type deliverances that you've seen? And in addition to that, if you want to share how somebody can connect with you, if they want to know more about this. Okay. The, I think the best way that you can connect with me is I have a, it's our YouTube channel that is called deliverance with pastor Henry. You can see that on rumble as well. Or if you go to Facebook, 
guess what the name of it is? Deliverance with Pastor Henry. You can go there and you get all the contact information that you need to get with me. Phone numbers and everything will be there for that. So uh, some of the miraculous things that I have seen, here's one of the things that if we talk about anger and if we talk about uh, addiction or if we talk about pornography or things like that, let me tell you one of the things that people are dealing with that all of these are under. See, there's always a strong man that's over these areas. See, pornography can be or lust can be a strong man that is over that area of uh, sexual sins or what have you. Or anger can be over uh, the anger issues, can be rebellion and violence and temper and temper tantrum. All of those are areas that this spirit can be over, that he uses these. But who is over these? Because if you don't get the strong man, you're just dealing with one little small area. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about a strong man that everyone has and most people don't want to talk about. And this spirit is, is called a spirit that's called mind control. Mind control is a marine spirit and he's an octopus. If, if you, even if you go into the political arena or go into anything that does with uh, controlling people's mind, they will always have a symbol of an octopus that's mm -hmm. there. And let me tell you what this does. An octopus is a marine spirit and he sits right on top of the head of people. And through his tentacles, he's able to control people's thoughts, their mind, their will, their emotions. He knows that uh, he, he actually, an octopus is so smart, is that he can, um, uh, through his tentacles, he feels and almost like feels your emotions. He knows exactly, what, and this demonic spirit sits on top of a person's head like this here. He has a tooth that bites right on into the top. And he controls a person's Of course, it's tongue. a spiritual thing, so you can't see it. It's not physical. Can't see it, but, yeah. you, but it works. So dealing with people who have dealt with pornography, anger, and all of these here, so that would be like one of these tentacles on the eight arms. So you can get over here and work on this tentacle, but you leave the rest. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you try to work on one, and you say, why does it keep coming back? Because an octopus tentacles can grow back. They actually can grow right on back. That's why it takes on that form. So you nip at the bottom and you're just getting a few things and it grows right back in two weeks. You've got to get these areas up and get to the strong man. So let me share with you about the strong man uh, of the mind control, if you allow me to. Sure. So I am um, going to church uh, that morning. I'm getting ready to go to church. There is a man that is flying in from Washington state. So I don't know this man. They say he's messed up. Mentally, he's messed up. And um, he's, he's, you just got to pray for him. As I'm traveling to church, the Lord speaks to me. And if you can hear the voice of the Lord, he spoke to me and he said, you will be dealing today with a spirit called mind control. I didn't know what mind control was. I said, I've read that in a book somewhere. Uh, it was one of John Eckhart's books. And I didn't have my book with me. I said, I got to get to church and I got to get there. I'm going to read this thing here. Well, when I get to church, he's already there. So the book's in my office. I go into my little interview area. He is sitting there. His, his uh, cousin is in the sanctuary praying. And I've got, as he's doing an interview, I'm doing the interview with him. I got this book open and I'm reading mind control, octopus spirit. This is how you get it off. You anoint, you take the, it tells you in, the, in John Eckhart's, he's dealt with this. You take the anointing oil, you anoint the front, the back, the sides of his head where he grips it at. You take the sword of the spirit. He tells you exactly how to sever the tent. This is, I'm reading this because guess what God's telling me? You getting ready to do this. So I'm reading this and everything. And then I talk to him. I close my book up and I said, go get his uh, cousin in the sanctuary. Brings her to my office and she's standing there. I said, let me tell you what I think we're dealing with on your cousin here. The Lord has shown me that we're dealing with a spirit that's called mind control. And it's an octopus that sits right on top of his head. And she says, Pastor, she says, did you check your phone? I go, no, I haven't. She says, check your phone. So I pick my phone up right there, and here's what she texts me. She says, I am here in the sanctuary, and the Lord has given me a vision. There is something that is sitting on the top of my cousin's head. It looks like an octopus or a squid sitting on top of the head. And she said, I don't know what this means. So the Lord confirmed to me exactly that's exactly what I was dealing with with him, with a spirit called mind control that just mentally has messed him all up. His thoughts were all over the place. And there are a lot of people who are like that. Their thoughts are all over the place, and they're thinking about this for a moment. They're thinking about this here. And mind control 
is controlling them. Your sexual desires, you think it's you controlling it. Mind control is working on you. And the Bible tells us, in James, it tells us that a, a, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Unstable in all his ways. So you ready for this here? Mind control has his mind, and you have a mind. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And people don't understand, why isn't this working for me? Well, deliverance is what sets you free. It gets all of this junk out of your mind, all of the pornography, all of the anger, all of these issues, and you get all of this out, and now you let Christ control your mind. Amen. So let me share. Let me share with this about how the I believe the armor of God works. Well, we got a minute and a half left, okay. Pastor. Go when ahead. you share it, share how somebody can get help somewhere in America if they're dealing with these issues that you're talking about. So you can uh, contact us again. Uh, I pastor a church, University Parkway Church in Aiken, South Carolina. Go through the website. You can go to the web, Google it. You can find us. We're there twenty four seven. A ministry out of our church is called the Spiritual Freedom Network, spiritualfreedomnetwork.com. Go there, click on help, call 803-761-7233, 803-761-7233. That's the number. Leave your voicemail. They call you back for deliverance. Amen. Very good. Well, Pastor, we got a minute left. Is there anything you'd like to say to our audience? Uh, maybe point them to Jesus Christ before we close? Well, I would want to let, let people know that Jesus is the answer. And I know that there are people who are struggling all across America. People are struggling with all types of addictions, uh, want to know why am I still battling these things? Jesus is the answer. And if you reach out, desperate people came to Jesus. There was all kind of people there. Desperate people sought him out. You need to seek out your own deliverance. Get with a church. Get with a prayer team who believes in real deliverance and God will set you free. Amen. Amen. And friends, if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it's as simple as A, B, C. A, admit that you're a sinner. B, believe in Jesus Christ. And C, confess Him as your Lord and ask Him to come into your life and forgive you and He'll save you and set you free. Pastor, thank can you. I add yes, D, sir. Can I do D to that? Yes, sir. And D is deliverance. It's the children's bread. Amen, brother. Pastor Henry, thank you so much for joining me on In Your Corner today. Now, I know that we didn't have time to finish that story, so if you'll be kind enough to join me on next week's program, we'll let you finish the story about the man and the mind-controlled spirit called the octopus. We will do it. All right. So, friends, tune in next week to hear the rest of the story that Pastor Henry was talking about. Our mission at In Your Corner Ministries is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. To that end, we've produced over 500 TV programs that have aired into over 200 countries worldwide through international television. But producing TV programs is a small portion of our ministry outreach. We do short-term medical mission trips and food distributions to the destitute Haitian Batays of the Dominican Republic and poor villages in Central America. Friends, that's why we're here, because the greatest three needs in these villages are, number one, there's no medical care. If you do not have money, you can forget about getting medical care. Secondly, there is abject poverty. Most of the people work here for less than $5 a day from sunup to sundown, either doing construction or working in the sugar cane fields. And thirdly, there is no clean drinking water in the villages. Everyone has to purchase water to drink. So you can be the answer to their prayers. Friends, you know, as followers of Jesus Christ, we're benevolent, all of us are benevolent. But sometimes the need is much greater than anything that we can do. So if God lays it upon your heart to be a part of this ministry, to help us, help others, or carry the gospel around the world, we'd love to hear from you. You can call me at 
1-800-242-0504. And a lot of times this program airs in the middle of the night, we don't answer the phone. Leave your name and number, we'll call you back. Or you can email me at kwfar, k-w-p-h-a-r-r, at gmail.com. But ask the Lord if He'd have you partner with this ministry to reach a lost and dying world for Jesus Christ. Yes. <laughs> 